We have four bourbons today, around $30 and 90 proof, going head to head in today's budget brawl. In the first corner, coming in at $30 and weighing in at 93.7 proof, 1792 small batch. In the second corner, coming in at $28 and weighing in at 90 proof, Dickel 8 year bourbon. In the third corner, coming in at $30 and weighing in at 92 proof, Balcones Texas Pot Still Bourbon. And finally, in the fourth corner, coming in at $28 and weighing in at 90 proof, Bullet Bourbon. Which of these four is the best pour? Let's brawl! Thanks, Joyce. As she stated, these are all roughly 90 proof and roughly $3. And with that, I know I'm very excited about this. As am I. It's I mean, bourbon. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> it's bourbon. It's our top of, like, our higher end bourbons for our price range. So, yeah, but higher end is not equal no. higher preference. You're right. But let's figure out what happens here. Glass A, as proven by the whole purpose of our channel. <laughs> mm. That's bourbon. Is it, though? I am curious to see if we're going to be able to pick out which of these is which. I'm always curious about that when we do a brawl. Oh, this smells really good, though. This does smell and taste and finish very well. Yes, it does. It is the first whiskey of the day for me, so... Same. Same. I, I was at work all day. I couldn't drink. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, though. Yeah. So I'm going to let it sit. Ooh, that's a nice hug right there. It does grow on you in the mm -hmm. huggy range. I'm going right into B. I'm going into B, too. Yep. It definitely smells different. A little more on the musty side. Same with the palate. More on the musty side. A little fruity? Yes. A I agree with that. Like a musty fruit. <clears throat> so going glassy. Yeah. So we're going to rush right through this and make it short. I have, I have a feeling I'm going to struggle with being oh. in favor of these. Hmm. Nose of this one is actually faint. I'm having a hard time. I disagree wholeheartedly. Yeah, and of course you do. Okay, maybe not wholeheartedly, like 80% heartedly. It's softer. It is definitely softer. It is soft. softer. I wouldn't call it faint. A little bit of a peanut note. It's a hard bite on the finish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. A little more tannic. It's not bad, but definitely much different than the first two. Yeah. But a very delicate nose for as sharp as it is at the end. For how for how sharp the finish is, the yeah. nose is that soft. Right. All right, glass D. Glass D. Ooh. You're going to disagree with me, because you always do. Mm -hmm. It tasted water more watery. It did. Okay. All right. I agree with you about 80% yeah. heartedly. But I don't think it killed it in any way. No. No, no, no. I think it's going to have it a... Just, just soft. Yeah, it just had a different mouthfeel. I'm not sure if that's a good first impression, though. That's us rushing through A through D. We will take a break and then go D through A. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and give us a like down below. And before you watch the rest of this video, go ahead and leave a comment of which whiskey you think is going to win this brawl. We took a small break. We're going to go D through A now. Uh, let's dive into D. I think that nose got better. That nose got different. I don't know if it got better, but it got different. You would have thought that someone changed out these whiskeys. No, see, I'm, I'm getting this. It gets the same to me. It's different. Like, the nose was different. The palate's pretty much the same. It's the same to me. I think overall, it's better this time around than the first Yeah, one. I would say marginally, though. I would say slightly more than marginally. Glass C? This one has a funky note on it, on the nose. Good funky, bad funky. I'm not sure. I'm getting that. The funk? Yeah. See, this one, I would believe that someone switched out in between. Because this is like a totally new whiskey to me. It's The finish isn't as sharp as it was the first time around. Yeah. A little bit of berries and cream on the nose. I'm not sure what to think of that one. Class B. Oh. Even mustier. But I like it, though. So a hint of, like, some sort of, like, powdered spice, in my opinion. And cherry, some sort of fruity note. How important for you is the nose when it comes to... Very. The nose is extremely important to me. I feel like that's your first impression to the whiskey. Yeah. You're smelling like, oh, and even if it's not as good on the palate as you want to be... You still have that initial really good first impression. Yeah. And I, I don't remember the science involved, but the nose is like what you smell is a large percentage of what, what you taste. You taste. Yep. The nose is very important to me. Let's go to A. Oh, talk about nose changes. Caramel popcorn. Yes. Oh, that smells so good. Ooh, there's like a peachy note to that. Peach. 
little bit of burnt molasses, not overcooked. Right. But like that. But like browned molasses, not yeah. like burnt, yes. but browned. That mm. smells so good, though. It smells divine. All right, so that's D through A. Lots of things have changed in that round, so we're going to go do things on our own for a bit, and we'll be back with results. After much deliberation, we are back with our results. Let's go ahead and start with our last place bottle. Coming in last place is Glass C. Glass C was Dickel Bourbon. That actually surprises me. That does surprise me. I, that was one of the ones I thought would be in the top two. I know people have blinded this in so many things around the same price range, and it's come out on top. Now, I had Glass C in last place, but it was flirting with third place for me. I had it in third place. I had it in second initially, but I actually moved it to last. Coming in third place is Glass D. Glass D is Bullet. That I did expect to be in the bottom two. Same. I did expect this to be in the bottom two. It's a source product for Bullet. Uh, eventually, they will make their own stuff, but currently it's sourced and has been for quite a while, actually. It is believed... I've heard a lot of different theories on where this is sourced from. It's sourced from a Kentucky distillery. You know that for sure. But one of the theories is that it's, it's sourced from Jim Beam. This makes a good mixer. It is. It's a good it, mixer. It's a good mixer. That being said, I think there's... Not a good straight. Decent mixers for cheaper. This was what, D? So yeah. I put this one in last. Yeah. So like... Uh, mm. okay. Coming in second place for us was Glass B. Glass B was 1792 small batch. Okay, mm. see, I was expecting that to be the winner. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm... means that Balconis Texas Pot Still Bourbon is our winner. And going into this, I was expecting that to be in the bottom two. So, uh unanimously got first. Yes, all of us yes. said first for this one. When I first tried it, I actually thought it was either this or Dickel, the 1792 or Dickel. When we came back through and we got that like buttery, caramely popcorn note, I immediately knew it, it was this. I knew it that was not 1792 after we got the corn yeah. note. I, yeah. I thought it was at first, the first time we got around, because I... It smelled One, fruity and it smelled... Yeah, I got a big time juicy fruit nose on it the first time around. Yeah. Yeah, and then the second time around, just that popcorn note. And I think what that butteriness is from is from the pot still. Mm -hmm. It's maintaining some more of those oils uh, mm -hmm. that come from the pot still that don't necessarily stay in calling cells that yep. are coming from these other distilleries. Yeah, so it's a uh, 30-ish, $30, 92 proof going up on our shelf from Texas. Good win for Texas right there. Also, only, was it, two years old? Yes, because it's from Texas, so it's aged shorter. Yeah. Much shorter, yeah. Here are what the exact age is. It is straight bourbon, so there has to be an age statement on here somewhere, unless it's four years old. I can't imagine. Uh, 24 months, yep. So two years old. Two-year-old product versus what's, I think this is like a six-year-old product. Yeah, and an eight-year-old product. An eight? Pretty dang good for two years. Be down an eight-year-old and a six-year-old and... As always, we come to the end of the episode, and we are going to blend all these together for our toast. I want to mention that Balconis, which just won, is actually just got bought by Diageo. So I expect their production to increase, and hopefully this product stays around. Until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This, this drink's on me. me. Ooh, that's interesting. It's got a lot of turns. It's okay. It turns a lot. It's okay. It's complex. <laughs> Overly complex. Like, yeah. It's okay. <laughs>